Hi everyone, my name is Audrey Long and thank you for attending my talk, Keep Your Enemies Close and Your Secrets Closer. So a little bit about me. I'm a senior security software engineer at Microsoft. I work in the CSE, a commercial software engineering organization, where I help people onboard their applications, ideas, any kind of hard challenges into the Azure platform. So for that, I'm a bit of an application software engineer and a security architect. Um, besides that, I have my bachelor's of science degree from the University of Cincinnati. I recently obtained my master's of science in cybersecurity degree from Johns Hopkins University. And at Microsoft, I am a diversity and inclusion ambassador. Some fun facts about me. I think a hot dog should be classified as a sandwich, and I'm also a PC gamer. So today we're going to talk about security tooling. This slide demonstrates some of the repercussions of not practicing good security hygiene. Data breaches are unfortunately not uncommon, and there are around 30,000 attacks on websites per day. A data breach can have a significant effect on both a company's public image and their customers' welfare. Many of these are easily preventable by introducing secure code hygiene into most pipelines. It's a serious issue and it costs about $6 trillion worldwide that has been reported in 2021. And credential scanning could be a potential solution to mitigate against this. So my organization is comprised of many software engineers compared to security engineers. I'm sure that that's pretty common in regards to lots of us security engineers across the world. Both software and security engineers have to have a common understanding of each industry practice so that we're on the same page. There is a need for tooling which should be easy to understand and easy to use for developers. The tooling has a need to be modular as well, so they can be swapped in as they are created and updated and new tools are discovered throughout time. Security is dynamic, so we need to scale dynamic solutions. But these solutions are really hard to research, to create, and to maintain. Let's talk a bit about some common security missteps. A stored password can allow an adversary to glean significant information on password structure and requirements. Not practicing secure development can generate more openings for adversaries. Strong, sensitive information in open source repositories can also lead to insights for malicious activities because they allow adversaries to see how the code base functions and which vulnerabilities can be exploited by looking at those libraries. The reuse of passwords is also very common in IoT devices today. So that's where most of these credential hijacks are actually occurring or in IoT or manufacturing type environments. Trying to tack on security at the end of a project is unfortunately very common. However, we need to be more vigilant by incorporating security into the requirements phase. Let's talk a little bit about resiliency. How do we improve the security of our applications? First and foremost, we can adopt an adversarial mindset. This can help tease out prime attack vectors and entry points into our applications and our systems. We could also build countermeasures and develop mitigation strategies to adjust the identified risks by doing threat modeling exercises. We can also implement security tooling whenever it's available to us to remove accessible secrets and make secrets easy and make, sorry, security easy and accessible. We can also integrate security practices at the beginning of a project lifecycle. In the long run, baking in security is going to be more cost effective. Let's talk a little bit about the intersection between software and security. That intersection generally is referred to as DevSecOps, where we are as security engineers, both in the development lifecycle and the operations lifecycle, and ensuring that security is baked in throughout every phase of this process. DevSecOps is a step into the right direction in regards to bridging the gap in the intersection between software and security. However, it's not the only way. These two areas also tend to be very siloed, security and software engineering. And there's not much explicit under understanding between these two. Um, to remedy this, we need to field a shift left, both in requirements space as security engineers and to inhabit the software space to better understand and work directly with software engineers and the projects that they work on. DevSecOps is essentially the addition of security layer on the normal DevOps pipelines. 
and with our injection in this pipeline, we can ensure that security is baked in all the time. Learnings from practicing becoming more in the software minded space will also lead to discovery and prevention of attack vectors within software projects. So DevSecOps is a step in the right direction to bridge the gap between security and software. However, more needs to happen. Is there one tool to rule off the security scanning in a project? There is no single tool, unfortunately. Many tools are needed to cover all the scenarios. Static code analysis, dynamic code analysis, infrastructure as code, credential scanning, container scanning, open source scanning, the list goes on. There are so many scanning solutions out there that are needed to cover the basis of your whole project. In this instance, I needed to create a credential scanner and I had to have um, a, a way in order to put this in the environment that I'm working in that does not have perhaps very many accessible tools available to me. So I created a wrapper around Yelp Detect Secrets. It's created by Yelp and this is an open source tool that you can go out and use right now. However, it's not just a wrapper around Yelp Detect Secrets. What I ended up doing was I took this credential scanner that I really enjoyed and I made it really easily and accessible into Azure DevOps pipelines. And not only did I wrap this tool to be ingested into Azure DevOps pipelines, I also grabbed the output from that scanning file and made it so it was really easy to integrate those backlog items right into the backlog for anyone to, to look at. Not only though, is it important to find the proper tools to the job, but understanding tooling capabilities to configure them properly in the code base is another important factor. Too many times have I seen a security engineer unbox a tool and just let the default configuration do the job. Is this good enough for security? I don't think so. Let's talk a little bit more about the reusable architecture of the tooling that I created. So I made a reusable foundation to plug and play command line scanning tools that are needed throughout many projects that have come at least to my organization. They needed to be scalable and dynamic. This was crucial for success because I live in a dynamic environment where I work with many different customers, many different tools, and have many different desires, many different outcomes, many different requirements. So in ensuring that we have something like a harness to drag and drop any kind of sc scanning, command line tool, free and open source available to me that works with my customers or my customers' tools, this is really important. So I'm not gonna go into this reusable architecture in depth. However, I'll go over the, 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 the high level steps. So the first and foremost thing we need to do, research tools. There's so many credential scanning tools out there, going through the list, actually putting them on your machine, finding the one that works for you. That's first and foremost what you need to do. Once you find a tool that works for you, you need to grab the inputs from that configuration file or whatever string you put in the command line with those arguments that's gonna be used to convert to actually running this in a pipeline uh, on the fly. After the desired execution of the scanning CLI happens, we need to ingest those results. A lot of the time they just get printed to the screen, but in, in my case, I had to take those output, outputs, put them in some kind of ingestible file so that I could put it into the Azure backlog, generate the report based on the artifacts, and then craft the pipeline code to, be e to easily introduce those findings into the backlog, AKA by just looking at an item and having really easy capability to just throw it back into Azure DevOps. So here's a little overview of what the tool kind of looks like. So at the top left-hand corner, you can see that um, that is what the pipeline code looks like. There's uh, the detect secrets, which is wrapped by Yelp. And you can see that in this code base, um, about 500 or 152, sorry, secrets were found. Um, that's because I use this OWASP WebGoat um, testing environment. I would definitely recommend others to go out there and use this testing environment as well. It's a vulnerable web application, which contains very many fun secrets. And I loved to use this as a baseline to, to test any kind of a scanning tool. And what I really wanted to, you know, put your attention towards is also that box in the right hand side. So here is how I made my tool configurable for my users. Um, so this is just one example of what you could do for your users to give them the interface to how they can run this command line tool within Azure. Um, and you know, what I'm trying to sell here, I'm not trying to sell a tool. I'm just trying to sell you the idea of making a tool much easier to use in any kind of environment that you're in to help you know you and your users use 
the tools that are easy for them. Basically, we want security to be easier, not harder. And one thing that I really wanted to point out here is that we have the word list file. Now, a word list also can be otherwise known as a blacklist or a whitelist. And one important thing I wanted to you know, showcase here is that we don't like to use the language black and white list. That's definitely old school language and it's not very inclusive. So what we should do moving forward as engineers and as security representatives and just as good humans is start to use the words allow list and disallow list. That really starts here with you. And I would love if anyone took any takeaways from this talk is to start changing your language within the workspace. Now here's another example of how you can take those objects and then easily just inject them in the backlog to create the bugs that you see at the bottom there. You just find the thing that uh, was failing and then you can easily create a bug. And that's, in my opinion, really easy to use. Um, anyone will use it. And then you'll always have something in the backlog to represent your secret. And thank you guys so much. Here's my LinkedIn and I would love to connect with you. Have a wonderful day.